Hi, and good day to wherever you are watching in the world. You are watching the weekly wrap up for this Friday, October 4th, 2024. Wow, we're already in October and what a week it has been. Explosive right off the bat, as you're going to find out very soon. <clears throat> so this week's shows we had Bill Holter, always, enter always entertaining and engaging with informative information about where we are in the financial world, particularly in the, in the world in space of uh, precious metals, gold and silver. Uh, Dave Champion for Common Law Trust Part 2, where we go into more an investigative dive on said trust to help you folks out as you prepare to have a place to put some of your wealth with the upcoming reset. And a new guest to the channel, which we're excited to have, Lloyd Brunson, who will give us a lot of information on his pending Supreme Court case to decertify the 2020 election. Next week, we have a very exciting guest, one of the top five economists in all the world, and certainly in Europe, Mr. Alistair McLeod. Uh, Derek Johnson, um, one of his cohorts oversees Brad Wozni, who's going to be talking about Nasara and the Reset and his testimony. Lynette Zhang, Eli Weber, and our co-channel owner, Chris, who has some channel updates with respect to Club Patriot, the currency site, and a very special surprise, which is very timely. It certainly took me by surprise, um, but I think it's very timely for where we are. So get ready for that. Okay, here's the headline news. As expected and anticipated, Iran has launched missiles towards Israel. Israel's defense forces in a short statement Tuesday said it urged Israelis to enter bomb shelters. The move was the latest escalation in a weeks-long skirmish between Iran-backed Hezbollah and Israel and comes days before the one-year anniversary of Hamas' October 7th attacks on the southern Israeli border. It also comes just as the new Jewish high holiday Rosh Hashanah begins at sunset this past Wednesday. And as you will note, uh, Secretary of Defense Bennett on our Telegram channel, as we said in the breaking news this week on CNN, reported Wednesday night that they were planning very soon to hit the secret nuclear power plants of said Iran. If you wanted to talk about the reset, folks, here it is for those who have been complaining about that. Patagonia is laying off 41 employees or 1% of its total workforce as an outdoor retailer undergoes the restructure. Chief Executive Officer Ryan Gellard announced the changes in a Monday LinkedIn post, which details how the company plans to reorganize its business structure in Ventura, California headquarters in order to refocus on product, storytelling, impact, and responsible business practices, all while breaking down silos. <clears throat> Walt Disney Company is consolidating operations that make TV shows, eliminating 30 jobs in the latest of a series of cost-saving steps. The drama and comedy teams at ABC and Hulu Originals will be combined, the company said on a Tuesday statement. At the same time, the ABC Signature Studio will be shut down while its operations folded into 20th Century Television, formerly Fox Business. Walmart, the retail giant known for its extensive network of stores, has announced the closure of 11 locations across the U.S. This decision comes as the company faces economic losses, prompting a strategic move to prevent more financial impacts. <clears throat> Excuse me. The closures are set to take place in October and will affect cities including San Diego, El Cajon, Columbus, West Covina, Townsend, Granite Bay, Milwaukee, Fremont, Aurora, Dunwoody, and Marietta County. Excuse me, Marietta, Georgia. Currently, Walmart operates 4,622 4, stores worldwide. However, the company has been closing several of its U.S. locations in recent years, sparking discussions about the underlying reasons. <clears throat> Excuse me, among the primary factors contributing to these closures are the low probability of certain locations, increased competition within the retail space, and shifting consumer habits favoring online shopping. Bloomberg reports that Vail Resorts, the world's largest owner of ski resorts, is letting go 14% of its corporate employees. That equates for less than 2% of the total workforce as part of an efficiency drive after reporting a widening loss in the final months of its physical 2024. <clears throat> the company's two-year plan is aimed at producing 100 million and annual cost savings by the end of physical 2026, according to a statement on Thursday. <clears throat> One of Shrewsbury's most well-known restaurants has closed for the second time in two years. The owners of the Peachtree Building on Abbey Forgate claimed that the company that ran the site had vacated the building. Allegedly, the money was owed to them and others. The Shire Collection, which has run a number of other venues in the town, took over the business in 2022. The White House on Tuesday said Iran is preparing for an imminent ballistic attack against Israel, as we discussed, and a direct military attack from Iran and Israel will carry severe consequences, a senior White House official said in a statement. Uh, according to Reuters in Boston, a Massachusetts woman pleaded guilty on Friday to running a high-end brothel network in the greater Boston area 
and the suburbs of Washington, D.C. that served wealthy and well-connected clientele, including politicians, corporate executives, lawyers, and military officers. Hanley appeared in Boston federal court to plead guilty to charges that she conspired to persuade, induce, and entice primarily Asian women to travel to Massachusetts throughout Virginia to, in order to engage in prostitution and committed money laundering. The world's largest mountain resort operator announced Thursday it would eliminate certain positions to save costs, even as the ski season approaches. Again, Vail Resorts is planning, planning to lay off 14% uh, of the workforce, as we mentioned earlier. Hundreds of part-time temporary employees at two GM plants in the U.S. will lose their jobs in the coming days as the UAW refuses to keep them as part-time temporary workers and attempts to make them full-time or permanent employees. Earlier this year, the discount retail chain Big Lots filed for bankruptcy, announcing it would be closing hundreds of stores nationwide. Today, that store closure counts is even higher. The company now plans to close nearly 50 additional stores in 25 states. The Irish Data Protection Commission has imposed a 101.5 million euro fine on Meta. <clears throat> the, penalty, the penalty follows investigation into a security breach way back in 2019. Meta had noticed the Irish authority that it had stored certain passwords of social media users in plain text. Simply put, the tech giant stored the login credentials of a large number of users without any encryption on its internal systems. This is extremely risky as a method as it can easily be exploited to compromise account security, Deputy Commissioner at the Irish DPT, Graham Doyle said in a statement. Woonsocket, Rhode Island headquarters of CVS is planning to lay off 3,000 employees nation nationwide, a company spokesperson confirmed on Monday. CBS spokesperson Mike DeAngelis said in a statement to Nexstar's WPRI that the pharmacy giant will be eliminating 3,000 jobs, citing continued disruption, regulatory pressures, and evolving consumer needs and expectations. The U.S. housing market has remained stagnant with just 25 out of every 1,000 homes changing hands this year, according to recent data from real estate firm Redfin. The first eight months of the year marked the lowest turnover rate in 30 years, according to Redfin, which conducted an analysis of housing turnover by comparing the first eight months of 2024 across metro areas, home and neighborhood types. It is using turnover as a way to measure housing availability. Chase and Citibank are amongst major banks that collectively closed 11 locations in one week. Major banks shuttered local branches from New York to Florida between September 9th and the 15th. This includes Fifth Third Bank, Bondview, Landmark, Trustco, Wells Fargo, Chase, and HSBC among the closures. And as you will note, yesterday, Bank of America had over 10,000 customers that could not get cash out of ATMs, and we're seeing zero balances on their statements. Even if you've never visited a Salt Life retail store, chances are you've caught a glimpse of the brand's iconic Salt Life logo. Most often it's seen printed on hats and shirts affixed to the rear window of the car in front of you. However, while the brand has spread beyond its origin on the East Coast, it is just announced that all of its retail stores will be selling <clears throat> Salt Life merchandise and shutting down. According to September 24th press release, the store closures follow Iconics International Inc. and Hillco Consumer Retail Group's acquisition of the apparel line, which was made through a competitive bankruptcy auction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Samsung Electronics is laying off its workers in Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand as part of a grand plan to reduce its global headcount by thousands of jobs, according to people familiar with the situation. The layoffs could affect 10% of the workforce in those markets, although the numbers for each subsidiary may vary. Lamb Weston Holdings has slashed its profit targets in light of a restructuring plan that includes the permanent closure of a U.S. factory and job cuts. The frozen potato product supplier said its first quarter results announced that the Connell factory in Washington will be shut down with immediate <clears throat> effect. While Lamb Weston did not reveal the exact job numbers, it is estimated around 375 jobs will be lost. A bankrupt Pizza Hut franchise is selling 127 of its stores across five states in the U.S., the latest wave and a possible closers for the fast food chain. EYM Pizza <clears throat> LP is selling its stores <clears throat> excuse me, in Illinois. Indiana, Georgia, South Carolina, and Wisconsin as part of a plan to restructure. It comes after EYM Pizza shuttered more than 15 of its restaurants in Indiana and Ohio. The company filed for Chapter 11 in the Eastern District of Texas in July. <clears throat> now, here are the latest uh, precious metals and oil prices as of the time of this broadcast. Gold is up $2,669.30. 
<clears throat> silver at $31.94, Brent crude oil, $75.68 with a slight uptick. Now at the Middle East conflict, we should see those prices start to spike dramatically. <clears throat> now here are the notable deaths and resignations. Japanese government led by Fumio Kishido has resigned ahead of the formation of a new cabinet by the next prime minister, Shigeru Isiba. Chief cabinet secretary, Yoshimaha Yahiyashi said, the country's parliament will later hold an extraordinary session to elect Ishiba, who took the helm of the ruling Liberal Democrat Party on September 27th as prime minister. Together with its coalition partner, Komieto, the party has a majority in both chambers and legislature. Japanese media outlets report citing sources that Hayashi, who is Ishiba's rival in the party election, will retain his post as well as Minister of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism, Tetsuo Saito, who represents Komito in the cabinet, ex-Defense Minister General Nakatami and former Foreign Minister Takashi Ayawa are expected to once again assume the same positions. Emperor Naruhito will approve the new government later in the day. Sony Pictures Entertainment CEO Tony Vince Chiara will step down from his role at the beginning of next year, will be succeeded by COO Ravi Hajura, effective January 2nd in the new year, the company said in a statement on Tuesday. Vince Chiara, who joined SPE in 2017, will remain in an advisory role as non-executive chairman until the end of December 2025. Maggie Smith, the two-time Oscar-winning actress, best known for playing the stern professor McGonnell in Harry Potter movie franchise and the tar-tongued Dewagger Countess on Downton Abbey died on Friday. Her published and children confirmed she was 89. Smith's sons Chris Larkin and Toby Stevens paid tribute to their mother in a joint statement. They did not immediately specify the cause of death. Original Anvil guitarist Dave Allison died September 30th of unspecified causes at the age of 68. He played on the group's first five studio albums before departing in 1989. His announcement was put forth on X. Jolly Pumpkin founder Ron Jeffries passes away. Uh, it is put with a loving, heavy heart that the father that touched many lives. He left behind a wife, Lori Jeffries, son Damon Jeffries, daughter-in-law Ashley Megan, who carries the spirit forward of love and ohana. Martin Lee, who won the 1976 Eurovision Song Contest as a member of the pop group Brotherhood of Man, has died at the age of 77. The group triumphed at last year's contest, which was held in the Hague, Netherlands, with the now famous song Save Your Kisses for Me, topping the points table at number 164. Trisha Dury, a resourceful and enterprising technology journalist who reported on some of the biggest names in the business in her hometown of Seattle and beyond, has died. August 30th, after a long battle with breast cancer, she was 46. A graduate of Seattle's Garfield High School and University of Oregon, Dury covered the rise of wireless technology, smartphones, and e-commerce, as well as gaming and venture capital as a reporter for publications, including Seattle Times, All Things D, MocoNews.net, and GeekWire. <clears throat> John Amos, the TV writer turned Emmy-nominated actor who starred as the stoic father in Good Times, as well as the father of the daughter in Coming to America before he was fired from the landmark sitcom for objecting to stereotypes and admitting letting his temper get the best of him, has died. He is 84. He died on August 21st in Los Angeles of natural causes, per reported his son, KC Amos, on social media. Yes. Mike Corbin on ABC's General Hospital, and poor Charles died August 27th in St. George. Uh, he was 78. Hale, a Michigan native, starred in General Hospital from 1995 to 2010. Poor Charles from 97 to 2000. He also played Dr. Roger Coleridge on Ryan's Hope from 1979 to uh, 75 to 89 and had a brief stint on a show called Search for Tomorrow. Joel Wolf, a retired NBA veteran who remains one of the best players the state of Wisconsin has ever produced has died. The Milwaukee Bucks announced on Thursday he was just 59. Wolf's cause of death was not reported, but Mark Miller, Wisconsin Basketball Yearbook, reports he suffered an apparent heart attack. Actor Park Zia, the glory actor, and Park Zia died at the age of 52 on Monday after suffering from a stroke. Her agency, Billions Entertainment, announced the same day. Joel Fleischman, a scholar of philanthropy who spent more than half a century at Duke University, where he was the founding director of its School of Public Policy, died September 30th at a hospital in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. He was 90. His death was announced by the Sanford School of Public Policy at Duke, which grew from a program that Mr. Fleischman established in 1971. Cause of complications from a fall, said Adam Abram, his executor, executor and longtime friend. 
Amadou Batar Mbao, a former government official in post-colonial Senegal who led the UN Cultural Agency UNESCO during a stormy 13-year tenure that brought accusations of anti-Western bias and promoted the United States and Britain to withdraw membership has died at a hospital in Senegal's capital, Dakar. He was 103. John Ashton, who has died at the age of 76, was a burly character actor, usually cast as cops and tough cookies, most notably Taggart in all the Beverly Hills Cop movies, um, Bounty Hunter, Midnight Run, and the long-suffering, of course, Sergeant Taggart, which we mentioned. Uh, he was also a native of Springfield, Massachusetts, adjacent to a town where I grew up in West Springfield, for those who are in that area. The Reverend Cecilia Williams Bryant, an African Methodist Episcopal Church, Bishop's wife, known for mentoring up and coming clergymen and fostering prayer, died on Thursday, September 26, her family announced. Bryant, 77, was the Episcopal supervisor for the AME districts that her husband, now retired Bishop John R. Bryant, oversaw. She also was the mother of Reverend Jamal Bryant, pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, a predominantly Black megachurch outside of Atlanta, and the Reverend Thema Bryant, a Pepperdine University professor and former president of the American Psychological Association. Michael Agenstadt, the artistic administrator of the Israeli opera for over 30 years, died of cancer on Saturday. He was 71. He served the larger <clears throat> opera community in Israel for decades. His contributions included founding the Children's Opera Hour and writing hundreds of articles for the respective programs printed each season. <clears throat> the former deputy leader of the conservative party, Michael Ancram, has died at 79. He was known formerly as the 13th Marquess of Lothian, held the role under Ian Duncan Smith and Michael Howard for five years in the early 2000s. Renowned snooker commentator Clive Everton has died at the age of 87. Everton worked for BBC TV for more than 30 years from the 1970s onward and was respected broadcaster and journalist. He was the founder of the Snooker Scene magazine and edited the publication for 51 years. <clears throat> Excuse me, William Lucy, a stalwart of the labor and civil rights movement who campaigned against South African apartheid and was perhaps best known for aiding <clears throat> the 1968 sanitation worker strike in Memphis notably by helping devise a potent slogan, I am a man died September 25th at his home in Washington. He was 90. Former Cal Poly, Cal Poly track and field star Shelby Danielle suddenly died on Wednesday at the age of 23, just months after receiving her master's degree. Trusted LA broadcaster and former KTLA reporter Warren Wilson has died at the age of 90 on Friday, his son Stanley Wilson said in a statement. <clears throat> Excuse me, former Chelsea, and Fulham midfielder Barry Lloyd has died at the age of 75. Robert Watts, the British producer and production manager who collaborated with George Lucas on the first three Star Wars films, as well as the first three Indiana Jones films has died, he was 86. Watts died Monday, according to his rep Julian Owen at Alliance Agents told The Hollywood Reporter. An outstanding wrestler during his days on the mats, Doug Roper went on to become a Hall of Fame coach in the sport <clears throat> to which he devoted his entire life. Spent nearly 40 years as a high school head coach in Virginia, including a remarkable 34-year tender at Tab High School in Yorktown. On Sunday, his toughest match came to an end as he succumbed to a long battle with Alzheimer's at the age of 68. Chris Christofferson, a Rhodes Scholar with a deft writing style and a rough charisma who became a country music superstar and an A-list Hollywood actor, has died. Christofferson died at his home on Maui. On Saturday, family spokesperson E.B. McFarland said in an email he was 88. McFarland said Christofferson died peacefully, surrounded by family, no cause was given. Bruno Sacco, who defined what we think of when we think of modern Mercedes, has died. Born in Italy in 1933, Sacco brought a very subtle Italian flair to the conservative house of Mercedes. He passed away at the age of 90 on September 19th. <clears throat> Matthew Lewis, a Washington Post photographer who won the Pulitzer Prize for his portfolio of Washington area personalities and ways of life, who became the newspaper's first black assistant managing editor, died October 2nd at his home in Thomasville, North Carolina at the age of 94. Cause of complications was said from his son, Kevin Lewis, to be from a fall. Akim Shepnasky, the radical German author and philosopher who founded several electronic and ambient music labels, including Millie Platt. Plateau and Force Inc. has died. Uh, wrote on Instagram, his colleague Lan Iwakawa said he was found dead Wednesday, September 25th. He was 67. Dikembe Mutombo, a legendary shock blocking, finger wagging basketball hall of famer who dominated defense at Georgetown University and on the NBA, turning opponents away from the rim, 
while building an off-court legacy through his humanitarian work in Central Africa, has died on September 30th at just the age of 58. <clears throat> Dr. Malcolm Donaldson, the husband of the Griffel author Julia Donaldson, has died at the age of 75. He was a pa pediatric consultant and senior lecturer in child health at the University of Glasgow until his retirement in 2012. <clears throat> Pardon me. Barbara Leigh Hunt, the actress who portrayed one of the victims of Barry Foster's necktie murderer in Alfred Hitchcock's uh, Penitolem film, Frenzy has died. She was 88 died peacefully at September 16 in her home in Warwickshire, England, England, the family announced. Richard Mayhew, who was known for his hazy abstract paintings that at the time resembled landscapes, died on Thursday at the age of 100. The news was confirmed by longtime representative ACA Galleries in New York, which had been showing his work since 1992. <clears throat> Madonna's stepmother, Joanne Ciccone, has died at age 81. According to an online obituary, she passed away peacefully on September 24th stemming from a very aggressive camp. Much loved Italian theater actor Giacomo Mori has died. His theater company confirmed on Sunday he would have turned 91 on October 1st. The actor and director had founded the theater company in 1961 with Roberto Sterno, who passed away last year. Born in Pissarro in 1930, Mori throughout a 70 year long career acted in plays by Shakespeare, Moldieri, Perandello, Dochevesky, and Goldani. He was originally scheduled to star in the play The Profundus by Oscar Wilde at the Vassello Theater in Rome this week, but the performance was canceled because the actor was unwell. Catsby Clay, the third generation of the Clay family to preside over the vaunted Runnymede Farm in Paris, Kentucky, died September 29th at the age of 101. Clay inherited the reins to the Runnymede operation in the 1950s, taking over a legacy that started with his grandfather, Colonel Ezekiel Clay, who founded the farm in 1867 and continued on with his father, Brutus Clay. The farm is currently run by his son, Brutus Clay III, who took the mantle in 2009. Tony Award winning Broadway star Gavin Creel is dead at the age of 48. And finally, Pete Rose, baseball's career hits leader and fallen on mind his historic achievements and Hall of Fame dreams by gambling on the game he loved and once embodied has died. He was 83. Stephanie Wheatley, a spokesperson for Clark County, Nevada, confirmed on behalf of the medical examiner that Rose died on Monday. Wheatley said his cause and manner of death has not yet been determined. Over the weekend, he appeared at an autograph show in Nashville with former teammates Tony Perez, George Foster, and Dave Concepcion. And that concludes the deaths and resignations. Thank you for your patience. Now, here's to my commentary. Obviously, everything is an urgent matter. This is something that I heard in the field walking with the Lord this week that I'm just sharing with you. This is not of my own natural mind. So I'm going to say this twice for emphasis. A lottery mindset is a poverty mindset. I'll repeat that again. A lottery mindset is a poverty mindset. Now, many of you have taken action, and that's key. But first and foremost, you must change your mindset to accommodate the wealth and being generous without worrying about losing it. That's the most important thing. Some of you who have that modern mindset, and we see it in the comments, will be broke in two to three years and wish that you never knew about this wealth transfer. This is why we say only 20% will actually exchange successfully. Getting the wealth is one thing. Keeping it is another, right? So we steward this along like the tie with open hands. It comes and goes in a flow. We don't worry about constancy but it, because it will continue. As God sees your heart of generosity, more will come. This is not the end. This is the beginning of the wealth transfer. That's why we are stressing the point that we want God's people to genuinely win. This is the moment for you to get your house in order and get your mindset right. For those with eyes to see and ears to hear, you will appreciate and receive this message. Well, that does it for this week's busy and vaunted wrap up. As you can see, we are putting more breaking news because things are precipitating over in Iraq and Iran now with the secret nuclear power plants being a uh, getting ready to be attacked as soon as uh, today, Friday the 4th, certainly by Monday, and with the XRP appeal now in full swing, you can expect to see things precipitate with breaking news and more news coming out in front of the mainstream and we in the truth or community. But as those, break, those updates and breakouts come, we will, of course, bring them to you. Have a great and safe weekend. Stock up, get prepared up, and uh, be ready. Your blessing is at the doorstep. Thank you so much. Take care. God bless you and goodbye for now.